hello, hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Black Ink Crew Chicago. Okay, this is season five, episode 18. I feel like we're going to get like 20 episodes, maybe, because I'm like, the end has to be near. Okay, pretty soon, pretty soon, pretty soon. Okay, if you have not done so already, guess what you need to go do? Yep, hit the damn like button. Okay, hit. Y'all know what I'm going to tell y'all. I will wait. Do you want me to see the Jeopardy song? Hit like. Like the damn video because I told y'all every time it helps YouTube realize that people are actually watching your favorite YouTubers videos. Okay, and after you hit the like button, if you have not done so already, make sure to subscribe to my channel to become a whole J Bird, J Bird, da 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 da. Okay, and all that good shit. Y'all know, hit the description box that has everything down there. My email, my PayPal, my Cash App, my, te my Teespring stuff, you know, my social media handles, who's seen things on, all that stuff is in the description box below. So make sure to look there too. Okay, my let's get, my let's, what? Girl, fix your languages. Let's get started on this review. So, you know, this was an interesting, not interesting, but interesting um, episode tonight. We see the beginning is Ryan is at the shop at the new NADMAG or whatever. And we see the people from the White Sox. So the white, yeah, the White Sox have come to Nine Mag to have a little get together, a little sweepstakes type of thing. They want to have a sweepstakes where people will enter some sweepstakes and then they'll have like the top 30, 40 people who win. And if they do, they will come to Ryan's shop to get White Sox tattoos. And Ryan is like, this is amazing. The White Sox is a huge organization for them to have chose, you know, Nad Mag, you know, with all the other tattoo shops in Chicago. He's very, 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 very happy. That's huge. Okay, it's huge and it's wonderful. Now, we do see later on in the episode how they did have sweepstakes. It was roughly like 30 people. Ryan had like 13 of his tattoo artists there and they white sock shirts and shirts. They white socks, um, jerseys or whatever. It was nice, you know, to see the fans come because they live in white sock tattoos. A big thing for Ryan, a big thing for the community. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it was a good, a whole good look. And I thought it was funny when Ryan said, we don't need no celebrity concierge. We have people coming to us, huge organizations coming to us with these situations. And I'm like, that's a huge, if you, huge huge okay they had the different news outlets there i heard about it and you know i don't even live in chicago you know what i'm saying but i heard about the news as well so congrats to nine mag okay now on the other side of nine mag tattoo okay well not that many tattoos are getting done you know what i'm saying van is in there smoking a hookah don is talking about how he was celebrating he had, you know he had completed ramadan and he had sustained from sex and i say well did you really he said well you know i was i was i was strained. I did not come or whatever. I held it back. I was like, Don, we need to know that, bro. But you know, it was what it was. Um, so he was he was withstand he was withstanding from a lease and semen. Okay. Anyway, we then see Charmaine pop up. Charmaine and her nipples popped up. And I'm like, girl, can you please cut your nipples down? Your nipples are too high right now. They are on high beam. And I don't, I don't know. I just think it's weird when, when, because we know when our headlights are on. We are aware of that because we can feel it because it's usually cold in the room. And you, the boobs feel a little bit different. So I'm like, she had to have known that her headlights was fully on. Okay, like high beam in the middle of the night, in the heat of the night type thing. I'm like, girl, cut your high beams off. It's just, it's seemed too much anyway. But, you know, because she know that Lily is not fired, that is why she is back, as all the group says. Because Bella was there, then... Zion and four. So she's like, you know, well, Lily, Lily did all these things. She was fighting that person, was fighting this person. She also gave me a black eye. So, you know, she should have gotten fired for all the other stuff. But now she's gone. And so I feel like I should come back to my job. And I'm like, but what do you do, Charmaine? Charmaine, what do you do? I know on the radio what you do. I know your cooking channel on your on your YouTube or whatever. You do other things in life. I get that. But Charmaine, what exactly is your job? What do you bring to the table on Nine Mag Black Ink Crew? 
nothing but headlights, okay? And they like, well, you know, if you're going to be the celebrity constantly year again or whatever, you need to bring in some actual celebrities, okay? We know that you talk to them on the radio, that you, you know, be hanging out with them elsewhere at, at events, whatever, but you need to get them here to have work done. And I'm like, I mean, but I don't think she's going to do that. And Don, I die for that year because, like, you be with them taking photos with them, but you don't bring any of them in here. And they show a picture of Charmaine in the same outfit she's in with a picture with one of the babies. I don't know if it was a big baby, little baby, little baby, one of them, the light-skinned one, okay, him, or whatever. And again, Charmaine, you don't bring nobody to the shop. I'm going to work on it. Let me call Beyonce. Girl, Beyonce ain't going to, girl, that's the one we know you don't have, okay? No one has Beyonce's number. I'm, I wonder if Jay-Z has it, okay? Anyway. You know, so now they say because Charmaine is back and it's all oh, the games are together. Yay! Let's throw a party. I'm like, so y'all gonna spend money but not make no money. I'm like, cause who here have we seen do a tattoo recently? No one? Anyone? Anyone at all? I mean, they all did tattoos at the, at the convention. But I mean, like, we why don't we see y'all bringing more clients to the shop. I think there should at least be one tattoo every episode. It's a tattoo show. If you can't take two, three minutes to show an artist do a tattoo, then don't call the shit black and call the shit hanging out crew. Okay, that's all they do. So I don't know why <sighs> we have to see Lily. Oh Lily leaving. She's leaving Chicago. Bye bitch. Okay, but her and Bella hanging out. It was basically because she said that, that girl never need a you know, kept, came back around um, talking about she been calling her. And I'm like, girl, no one cares about La Barita. That's the girl who was with Van. She was the apprentice or whatever. And Van was messing with her or whatever. And I never got her name right then. And I won't get it right now. Okay. So she was calling uh, calling um, Lily. I don't know why. Because I feel like she ain't need no Lily. Why you call Lily? Well, probably because she know Lily has an issue with everyone. And I'm like, okay, messy boots, messy boots, messy boots. Lily then tell Bella, because, you know, Bella and Evelina, Evelina, um got into that fight at, at the last tattoo convention with a chicken, okay, when a girl knocked a chicken out of her hand. I'm like, girl, I would have whooped some ass, too. So, look, I told her that, you know what I'm saying, if she wants to talk to us or whatever, she first needs to pop the IC for that whole fight thing. I'm like, really? So, last week, y'all going to get her, Lily got fired. Then y'all want us to make, make, have us believe that she has something going on with her uterus or her phobia too, or her, whatever. Then you have a couple. We don't care about Lily, okay? We wish her well in life, but we don't need her on our television sets. Like, at, I just feel like this is such, oh, it was just like, I, I, was, I wanted to fast forward. But I was just like, well, I'm sitting here playing, you know what I'm saying, a little game on my phone or whatever, playing Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll just let it play as I'm playing Sonic. You know what I'm saying, getting them rings or whatever. So, you know, Evan need to come walk in looking kind of crazy. I'm like, first of all, why is she in a polar bear jacket? Like, why is she here? Okay, why? Why is a polar bear coat walk through? And then the people in the back is me. Hey, look at this. That's the name. You know what I'm saying? That would have been me too. Like, oh my God. No, I wouldn't because I don't care that much. I wouldn't have been hype at all. I would say, girl, these hoes are just crazy. Anyway, so old girl walk in her polar bear coat. And I'm like, is it that cold outside? I'm not sure. Now, y'all remember, this is what she looked like, okay? That's, it's Evanita, but I would not call her that, okay? Even with the name, look at me in my face. Her name is Never Neater. Okay, now she come in telling Bella, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying, because I didn't have no issue with you, whatever. It was a whole misunderstanding. No, bitch, you walked up and knocked some out my hand and we started scrapping. Okay, that's what it was. But, you know what I'm saying, Bella accepts her apology or whatever. And she then, they're like, why would you even call him Lily in the first place? Well, you know, I've been trying to get to the van, and, you know, but he wasn't talking to me or whatever. And now I've been reaching out to Lily for a while, but she didn't reach, reach back out until recently. She then say she wants to tell everybody that Van and Charmaine was having sex in Vegas. That Van had sex with Charmaine in Vegas. And when she said it, I was looking like, you can't be serious, right? Like, you, that's, that's your news? That Van and Charmaine had sex? Girl, first, so when, when, when? So, so you mean to tell me that either before or after Van fucked you, and then before or after Van fucked Jen, that he fucked Charmaine? Because he was fucking you first on the trip, 
Then Jen got there. He was fucking Jen. So at what point in time did he fuck Charmaine? And if you know he fucked Charmaine, why wouldn't you bring it up at the Vegas house on a Vegas trip before they get they put you out the house? Girl, I just cannot. She gonna say, well, I because I heard two fat people fucking. I said, two fat people fucking? What? What? The, what? what? Charmaine not even fat. And then I said he just thick. I, girl, I, anyway, I'm like, I, I just, the producers are messy because they gave this heifer a whole confessional shot to ask her, well, how do you know this happened? What's going on? Well, I heard, because I was in the rooms and the walls are thin. And again, I heard two people fucking having sex and whatnot. I'm trying to stop cussing so much so YouTube will stop flagging my goddamn videos. I heard them having sex, and they said, what did this sound like? You know, well, you know, good sex sound like macaroni and cheese when it's but this sound like old oatmeal. I'm like, how can you hear old oatmeal? How? Because if it's dry and old, you don't hear nothing. Okay, it's like the wind blowing with no wind. Okay, I just, look, she messy. She messy, and she then say how Van played her, and so she mad at Van, how Charmaine was, you know, not treating her nice, whatever. So she mad at how they, like, left her destined or whatever, because they do show that Van was like, you know what I'm saying, you can't work the shop no more, whatever. He drives like a bad habit because of what she, because, I mean, you was there for a reason. He got his reasons off of you, and then you was done. So my thing is, she came back solely to be messy. And anyone who believes her and passes along this information is stupid. Well, meet stupid Bella. Okay, Bella mentioned, well, there's a party happening at the shop or whatever. And you know what I'm saying? It's just a party. Bella, why would you? Bella, you barely can afford your child and your, 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 your rent or whatever. Why is you up here trying to spread information and have that girl come to the shop for you to get fired? You can't afford, you can't lose your job. <sighs> That's the pure fuckery of it all. I'm just like, girl, you going to tell them that Van and Charmaine had sex because Van broke up with you months ago? I can't. I cannot. Anyway, Don and Ashley. Don wants to, you know, make Ashley feel special, okay? They were not able to get that expensive old house or whatever. So he wants to repropose to her, you know what I'm saying? And also have a whole new wedding, you know, renew their vows. Because last time, y'all know uh, Don had sex with the strippers. At his bachelor party, okay? He was late to the wedding. A bit hungover. But again, Van, I'm not Van, Don, like, slept with one of the strippers. Girl, it was crazy. So the first marriage of the wedding was ruined, okay? But since then, Van, why well, keep saying Van? Don has matured tremendously. Like, I don't think anyone thought, Don and and Ashley's marriage will last because he kept cheating. You know, in season one he would cheat on her with Charmaine, and season two he would cheat on. You know, in season two he had a whole baby on her. I think like in season three he was caught cheating on on Snapchats. Okay, and it was just so every season it was something. But as you stuck around, stuck stuck stuck. The, the, then the girl who he was on Snapchat with. So she was pregnant. It was a lot. Van, I stop, girl, stop saying Van. Don has done a lot to ask. So I swear, I don't think anyone thought they would last as long. But they seem happy. And Don seems like a whole different person. Like, he seems like he respects his marriage and respects his wife. Finally, it has happened to him right in front of our face. And we just cannot hide it. So it was great. So he brings up how he wants to go, renew the vows. New ring, all that stuff. So he out there looking for a ring. The dude said, well, you know, because he can't pick one. I can't. I don't know which one she want. And the guy said, well, how about you just bring her in and her pick her own ring? That's a great idea. See, that's what he's going to do. But he do have a chef come to their house, you know, cook some good food, have a great dinner. He has, like, roll up and flowers uh, over the place. And she's like, what What did he do now? What did Don do? It's crazy when your husband do something nice and you just assume he did something wrong. Mm -hmm. girl said old news that old news but he just explained to her that you know he wants her to feel appreciated he wants her to know how much he cares for her how much he appreciates all that she's done for him with him what she's tolerated within him you know what I'm saying? he didn't he didn't grew to a whole adult grown husband or whatever good father good husband in these streets and you know how you know we can't get the house we want right now but you still deserve everything you want baby you know what i'm saying because we went through a lot you know what i'm saying we better now even though we've been through all that stuff, we are better now. And they are, because she even bring about 
how she, you know, can't believe how great they are now. And they are. A girl's a whole 360. So he gets on one knee and proposes, you know, that they get reengaged. Not reengaged. Girl, what is wrong with you? That they renew their vows and she was oh so happy. Yes, of course, of course. Because she do need to do over from that first wedding. It was horrible. It was, she was crying. The brother was mad. He was, he was drunk. It was really, it was crazy. It was, everybody was hung over. But girl, it was what it was. But of course she says, yes, she opens, opens, opens up the little box. And she's like, it's empty. Why is it empty? He said, you know, I want you to be able to pick out whatever one you want. You know, pick out the ring that calls out to your heart. I say, now, damn it, Van. Girl, if you say Van, one more damn time. <laughs> damn it, Don. Um, it was very loving. It was thought out. I'm like, slow clap for Don. Okay, so I don't want to make no loud noise or whatever microphone. But it was really great. He then gives her some tickets to Africa. So how they're going to have a destination wedding. And you know what I'm saying? They, he wants to go to the motherland and get married. You know, to go back to go, go back to our home. And, you know, where we come from and, and experience that. And, you know, get married. So I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure that VH1 is paying for it. And I'm like, Don, that's smart. Absolutely have them pay for it. Have them pay for the wedding, the new ring. Okay. Everybody take it. Pay for it all. Because we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. Okay, it's arable. It's viewable. Okay, do all of that. So, Van takes his daughter to see college. I don't know the name of the college. It's something that's not too far away from, away from Chicago because he wants her to be somewhere close. And But she get there or whatever, and, you know, she don't really want to be there. She tell Daddy Van that she... I hate them. It's just, she tell, you know, they walk around this campus or whatever, and, you know, we see the sorority step in. We see, like, one of the fraternities stepping or whatever. It looked like it was a nice, enjoyable situation. But she's like, yeah, I think I'm going to go to National Guard. Oh, he was like, what? Say say what? So she said she's been thinking about it for about a year, that she wants to try something different, and that she wants to go to National Guard. Because it's not like I'm going to the Army. You know, they don't get deployed that much. Yes, they do. They really, really do. People don't realize how busy the National Guard gets, especially nowadays we keep having, like, all kind of, you know, emergency situations, whether it's weather stuff or just stuff in general. But you, they do call out people in the National Guard. So I feel like she may not realize that she's not going to go into the National Guard and not have to get involved in things or whatever. And there might be, I mean, it, she may not have, she may not go, like, and be fighting with guns or whatever, but, you know, to a third world country or not, but she still may be in harm's way, you know, and we never know. But she, that's what she wants to do. And then, like, I don't, you know, we'll take your senior year, you know, think about it or whatever, and then, you know what I'm saying, make a difference, make, make, a, make a decision later. Okay, but I want to do this, I, I, this is what I want to do. He like, well, I don't know why we came here. I don't either. I don't either. I guess it's for her to tell you in a different way. But I think it's smart that she said, like, because she said, you need to go to college. I am. I'm going to go to National Guard, and that's going to pay for college. I mean, girl, it was fine. Um, We do see Van finally does a tattoo, okay? T.I.'s niece. Uh, What's her name? Uh, I think it's Kamaya. She is Precious' daughter. So, you know, Precious was T.I.'s sister who passed away. So, this is her daughter. And she's coming to him to get a tattoo of her mom's, you know, her mom on her on her arm or whatever. Um, You know, she was in town. She hit Van up. I mean, I'm surprised. I would hit a Ryan. Even maybe four. Okay? Um, but not, not that Van don't do good work because he do. But, I mean... Because we've seen the show and we see him being, you know, accused of messing tattoos, um, I wouldn't go with him right now. But, you know, she's like, I want to go to you because you do great portraits. And I do think he do great portraits. I do think the two situations were two, you know, standoff situations or whatever. But, I mean, hey, she wants what she wants. I told you, if I go, I won't eat it, um, Ryan or four when I get my cover up. Anyway, so she wants the portrait done. He does it, and it looks beautiful, okay? It looks like precious. You know what I'm saying? If y'all watched T.I.'s show, he did a really, really, really good job um, with the picture. I, I do like it. Um, I hope it stay looking nice like that, though, with no color, but it, it, it looks just like precious. 
I was like, damn, man, you know what I'm saying? You are talented, bro. Okay, all up and through. So while he's doing the tattoo, though, he brings up how he understands, you know, her wanting to get the tattoo of her mom because of how close him, his daughter is, and the same way how much she loves her mom, that's how much he loves his daughter. He then shows how he has his daughter's face tattooed on his head. Okay, his the, the, the tattoo is like on the skull of his head of his daughter. I was like, well, go ahead, then, man. Um, he brings up how he just kind of has to accept that his daughter wants to go to the National Guard. And even though it frightens him because he just wants to always keep her safe. And how safe can he keep her if she's gone? But he said, I realize that she's a great kid. Like, she's a great, great kid. So we see all these flashbacks, you know, him and her together and everything. It was really, really cute. And it's cute to see Van in these, you know, fatherly moments. Um... I think it humanizes him a little bit because Van sometimes, you know, piss people off. Well, he pisses me off because he was bitching and moaning for like two seasons. Um, but this reminds me of the Van who we first met like season one, season two, when it was all cool or whatever. So, you know, Van is going, he going back on me. I think Van has me blocked though on my personal ID page because I used to say shit <laughs> before I became a YouTuber um, because he was pissed me off for some reason. I think he has me blocked on like... <laughs> <laughs> one of my pages, but it's well, I have a, a personal IG page, and then you know my Jaylee's Corner one, um, and I'm blocked on one. I think I'm blocked on my my regular one, but girl, I don't care. Anyway, but you know he like again, he thinks he gonna let his daughter do what she wants to do because you know she not you know a crazy kid or whatever. So they have the party for Charmaine. It's a whole little Mardi Gras theme party. You know, everyone is there. You know what I'm saying even Ryan pops up, he's there. Whatever, like I you know they should be working. But, you know what I'm saying, hey, my business, I'm going to let them do what they're going to do. I'm just here for the for the look and the weed. Because please believe this, that was all in their eye. So, we see, you know, Charmaine and Neek get there. We see Kat from Nanik, Griff Nanik, from Black Ink Crew. New York is there, too. Um, Bella there, where her titties out. You know, I'm looking like a girl trying to get beads. I would never get anyone shaking their, their naked titties for beads that cost like a dollar. No. I mean, if I'm going to shake my tits, it's going to be for, like, some money. Just going to say that right now. Anyway, so Bella brings up how she is not going to tell anybody what Neverlita said about Van and Charmaine, you know, doing it or whatever. And I'm my girl, and let's just stop talking about it. And then we see, you know, Neverlita walk in the door. And I'm like, why is she here? Girl, for what? Okay. And she walked in, and Bella was like, oh, this bitch came here. As y'all can see, that is Cat in the back. Is a Cat or Kit? I don't know. The girl from that from you know from Black and Crew New York. I can't I could never remember if it's cat or kit. I think it's kit. I think it's kit. We're gonna say we're gonna we're gonna let that go. So we also know that Jen is there in the back, okay? And when Charmaine see Neverly to walk in, she's like, Jen? Jen? I'm like, why is you calling Jen? And you know, when they ask her why she there, well, somebody invited me. And Bella, like, I didn't invite her. I did not invite her. Yes, you did. You told her about it, okay? Because had you never said anything, she would not have been able to be there. And this is why I said the, the producers are messy, simply because they got her mic. She's there because they let her be there. Let's just say that, okay? That is why she's there. And I'm like, girl, it's just all bad. So at that point in time, you know, Van, first of all, Van and Ryan looks very, very high. Okay, let's just say that. Um, and I'm like, I mean, are y'all, like, even, can y'all even see? And Jen is pissed, okay? Jen got her shoes off, ready to scrap, okay? She ready to go and throw down with this girl or whatever. You better get the bitch. You get, get her out of here. Get her the fuck up. Why she here? And they like, calm down. Like, we surprised here, too. Like, we, we did not know she's going to be. Like, we don't know what's going on. And then, <laughs> Van, like, man, if I don't get this girl up out of here, you know, Jen going to kill her and she's going to kill me. Yes, yeah, she is. She's very, 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 very pissed. So, they, but they did stop Jen from, like, running up and just beating on her ass. So, Jen, you know, I do believe Jen, like, would just beat people. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just think it's going to happen. So, they talk while you're here. You need to leave, blah, blah, blah. The whole thing, somebody invited me, whatever. And I think at that point, you see how Jen is in the back yelling, like, what you still doing here? I, why you still talking to her? Okay, when I come up there, I want her to be prepared for what I got coming. Because I told her, to, I'm like, Lord, when Jen, girl, your throat has to be on fire because you yelling so loud, okay? 
But I also get it because, again, the way that Evanita left last time, we know it was some bullshit. And so she did not on good terms with anybody. Anybody. And the fact that Bella thought it was smart to even meet with her and even mention that party is why Bella's going to probably get fired one day. It's also the reason why Van said to call her Latifa because she be fucking up. Okay? Remind her, remind her who she is. Latifa. Anyway, they are like, look, you need to leave. You know, you want some bullshit or whatever. Whatever happens between me and you is over and done with or whatever. Like, I don't even know why you're here. Why are you here? Okay. And I'm like, I'm, I was chilling. I wasn't talking to you. I'm like, bitch, it's his shop. You can't come in his shop and then say, I don't know why, why you talking to me. Because you there. And you should not be. I'm just like, it's just dumb. So, Jen, like, I'm going to come up. I'm gonna, When I come up front, I'm going off. And so, La Barita realized, you know what? I probably need to leave because if I don't, you know, in about 10 seconds, she's going to be on my ass. And she finally leaves as Jen's coming up front to just probably beat it up or whatever. But the funny part was security was behind Van seeing them like, okay, like, he like shit. <sighs> I'm going to get beat up. Because for security, they have to step in. So the face the dude made right behind Van because, like, you know, Jen finna come up here. It's finna be some shit. I'm finna get punched in the throat. But hold him back. Oh, my God. I'm like, they have to get paid a lot of money to, 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 to just even sit there and be put through trying to break up fights. Okay? But, again, Lava need to leave. Okay? She leaves because she's smart. And she realized, I'm about to get murdered. So, I'm going to leave right now. So, when she leaves, they're like, why was she here? What was she here for? Bella, oh, my God. You know, okay. Let me tell y'all what happened. So, Lily called. They're like, Lily. Bitch, Lily, she don't work here that messy, bitch. I'm like, yep, it's all Lily's fault. And Bella fault too because Bella, Bella keeps letting people lead her to Temptation Islands and she should not do that. at the all, okay? And so, but you know, she called Lily and said, and she told us, she she told us, they like to spit it out. What is it? She told us that Vanna Charmaine had sex in Vegas. I was like, first of all, why did you say it like that? It was just so weird how he said it, for one. And they like, what? Yes, yeah, she said that y'all had sex in Vegas. And even Nick was like, who here believe that? And no one said nothing. Like, because no, no one, it's, it sounds so just preposterous that he, girl. And no, no, I don't see Van and Charmaine bumping uglies. I just do not. I don't believe it. Now, they would have said Van had sex with, Anybody but Charmaine, they just don't, I don't see them two even liking each other, like, at all. Girl, no one believes you, and I'm happy no one believes you. However, in the confessionals, when they're asking people, well, you know, do y'all believe something happened between Van and Charmaine? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, I don't know nothing. They acting like, oh, did something happen? Look, y'all ain't gonna fool me. Mm-mm, y'all ain't gonna fool me. I don't believe it, okay? I think that was them just being silly. And they gonna say, Don, did you know something that happened in Vegas? And he laughs. I'm like, Don wasn't even in Vegas. He was in Chicago. Now, I mean, I don't know if Van told him something, but I don't believe Van and Charmaine had sex. And y'all ain't gonna have this be the next conspiracy theory, okay? No, I won't do it. I cannot. It's just over. And that was the whole episode. So I'm like, see, nobody got beat up. Peace. <laughs>